Hey guys, so this video we're going to do a quick overview of this Edelbrock AVS2 carburetor. This is the 1913, which is an 800 CFM with the electric choke. I want to go over some of the basics when you first get it and install it, some initial tuning. There's several other things you can deeper dive into it to really tune in your engine, but we're just going to get it up and running and get the basics out of the way. It does come with the instruction manual, which is actually really helpful. It breaks down each individual setting and is really good for getting you going. But we're going to touch some basics. I'm not a carburetor expert, but I've had the Performer Series, which is very similar for 20 years and been tinkering around with that and changed a lot. Now with the carburetor, you're also going to get the carb gasket. You also get the air cleaner gasket. You're going to get your red power wire for the electric choke. You're going to get the ground. You get your stud for hooking up your throttle cable. We get the plug for the back. I'll show you in a second. We get a couple of vacuum plugs. We get a T and a nut and washer on there, which looks like it's for the back side of that guy. So when we get this thing starting up front, well, first off, I'm putting this on a big block, 454, 800 CFM. As I was researching, trying to figure out what carburetor I wanted to go with, people with the big block seemed to really like this carburetor on it. And then sometimes someone would chime in that had a small block and use this 800 CFM, and it was way too much carburetor for them. So I think that's really good. I use a 600 CFM on my 350, and I like it. But if I really, really like this carburetor, because my other one's a Performer Edelbrock, I might go with the 650 AVS2 instead of the 600. But we don't know yet because we haven't tried this big one yet. Okay, first up, the vacuum ports right here. This is timed vacuum. This is manifold vacuum. It's going to go to the vacuum advance on your distributor, and you're going to plug the other one. If you don't have vacuum advance, you're going to be plugging both of them. Now, you will hear people all over say, oh, use this one, use that one, blah, blah, blah. First off, I don't think it makes a huge difference. You're going to just end up using whichever one you feel like your engine's running the best with. On my 66, I use the manifold port over here. So that's what we're going to be using with the Corvette, which by the way, did I mention it comes with the manual, which goes through all of this stuff and it's really good. It has a lot of information in it. I just want to cover some basics. Here we have our idle mixture screws. Now it's not like this is air, this is gas. It's left side, right side of the carburetor. So what I like to do is screw these all the way in until they're bottomed out and then back them out one and a half turns. Then to this vacuum port right here, we can hook up a vacuum gauge or you can look at your tack or if you have a timing light that gives you your RPM, what we're going to do is set our idle mixture screw. That's this front screw right here. And we're going to set our idle to about 700 RPM. I'll... By the way, you do this with the vehicle totally warmed up. Don't do it on a cold engine. Wait till it gets to operating temperature. Okay, so you're going to have that at 700 RPM. Screw these all the way in. The back them out a turn and a half. Your goal with adjusting these is to get the highest RPM or the most vacuum that you can. So you'll make very small adjustments. You just turn it just a little bit, just a little bit. And... As your vacuum goes higher, you're doing good. You prefer in as opposed to out. So start screwing in more. And one and a half turns out, that's like the base. You may end up finding, hey, that was good. You don't even have to mess with it anymore. But you're going to go left and then you're going to go right. And you're just going to kind of go back and forth until you get the highest vacuum or highest RPM that you can. If you get to a point where you get significantly higher RPM, you need to bring it back down to 700 so you'll be adjusting your idle mixture screw over here again. Now if we go over here, we have our electric choke and it's negative on bottom, positive on top. You are going to ground this to one of these screws. Now if you look at the wire they give you, they give you a really long wire. So I'm going to be shortening it up, crimping it, and figuring out which one looks the best. Since it comes out this way, I'll probably loop it over to this because I don't know, it might look goofy trying to make it there. But anyways, that's where you're getting your ground. Now your power, you need it to get 12 volts with the accessory, the accessory port with the key on. You don't want a constant 12 volts. And a lot of people will run this to their coil or like for me with the HEI, the 12 volts going into the distributor. I mean, technically you're not supposed to do that. My Caprice has been wired like that for 20 years and it's worked perfectly fine. Technically you're not supposed to do that. So your fuse panel most likely does have a keyed 12 volts. 
that you can connect this to. And that's probably what I'm going to do on the Corvette because it's like the right way to do it. <laughs> so you're going to have your 12 volts there. Now this is adjustable as well. You have three bolts right here. You loosen those and you rotate it. You can see the pink mark there and all these little notches to give you kind of a guide of where you're at and where you've been. And I haven't had to adjust the electric choke on my Caprice, or I haven't at least, since I bought it. Can't help you with how to adjust it, but it's a spring in there. You're adjusting the tension and how closed this guy is up here. The main thing is you want it wide open when you're all warmed up and ready to go. Now, here we have our fuel line. It comes with this little tag. You're going to have a rubber hose going to that. If your air cleaner hits, because you're going to have the rubber hose coming out here, you can't immediately come right down. If you're hitting your air cleaner or having any kind of clearance issues, there's another fitting you can get called a banjo fitting. And what it is, if you, if you don't know what it is, it, it comes as a 90 degree angle as soon as it comes out of here and it can move. So you could aim it like straight down and have your hose come down here for more clearance if you need it. For my for my 66, which again, this is the body of this thing is almost the same as the performer. A little different, but very similar. And like this is the same. Um, I don't hit my Edelbrock air cleaner. 14 inch Edelbrock air cleaner clears that. Now as we look at the back, we have our port here. Uh, you could have it go to a transmission vacuum. Most people probably go to their brake booster for power brakes. We do have the plug in here. If uh, I believe it's 3 8 Boy, I should have looked at that. The instructions say I think it's 3 8 um, So you're going to have to plug it if you're not using it. If you are using it, they don't supply. They supply the plug, not the port. So you're going to need that. Now as we go to the throttle side, you did see we have the little ball stud here for hooking up our throttle. If you have a TV cable, I have a 700R4 on the 66. They make a bracket that hooks up down here that gives you the right angle and the right throw for your TV cable. So if you have that, you need that in addition. That's separate. Um, you're going to hook up your throttle return spring, obviously, on there. Uh, this bottom screw is your high idle adjustment. So when the engine's cold, you can adjust if it's too high or too low, whatever. But that's only when the engine's cold. We have our accelerator pump adjustment right here. You can see there's three positions. It's currently in the top position. You just pull that little clip and the rod. and So that is like your initial shot of fuel when you're first accelerating. At the top position, that is the leanest position. And then the bottom position is the richest. If you have a hesitation or a bog when you first hit the gas, it's likely you're too lean. So you may want to switch this to a position that's a little richer. I'm going to leave it there for now and see how it goes. It's pretty much how I feel about all the adjustments on this carburetor. Just leave it where it comes out of the box and then make some fine adjustments as we go. Now, the other thing that... It's a pretty easy change that you may want to do is your step up springs and rods that are inside here. I did a whole video on it a couple of years ago and haven't had to mess with it since. So I'm not going to have the specifics right. But they sell kits that have various springs and rods that you can get. And what you're going to do is unscrew this a little bit, not all the way, and then move this door off to the side. But so it's still half blocking this hole. And you're going to start your engine. And when it idles, Oh boy, I'm going to have this totally wrong. I shouldn't even guess. Anyways, the springs go up and down. The vacuum of the engine will compress the springs or let them up. And boy, I wish I remembered it better. But it may be something that you have to change out with your step-up springs and your rods there. Now, another thing is your little squirters down here. You can see that. There's two torques that hold them in. And I feel like on my Edelbrock, you can access those without taking the top plate off. But here it looks like you have to remove the top plate because I can't see the, the bolt heads in there. But you can also change those out, get larger ones if you need. And let's see. The only other thing to mention 
is this adjustment here for the rear butterfly. You got the spring here, you have a Torx, and you have the slotted screw, and you can increase or decrease the tension here. The Edelbrock Performer does not have that, so I've never played with it and don't know anything about it. <laughs> that's something you'd have to find separately, but that's another adjustment. Hopefully that was helpful. At least you know the parts and pieces and where things go and can do further research to, to nail it down completely. So there it is. Thanks for watching.